You say it's irrationally high. Why is it? Because as you see in that graph, that we have gone parabolic over the last few months. Now, the popular narrative is the Fed is increasing interest rates. Of course, the dollar is going to increase. But that's just not true because other central banks have also been increasing interest rates. So if you look at interest rate differentials, the dollar's increase or surge over the last few months is not explained by that. Now, these are the kind of fundamental factors which usually drive currency markets. And my point is that's not happening anymore, that this is a fair trade going on, a sort of doom loop which is building, that we are all, you know, scared. And it's not a statement on America's economic strength either because equities are selling off here. People are just selling their assets and just holding off uh, by keeping it in U.S. dollars because that's the currency to hold. So it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. And something needs to happen now to circuit break this because otherwise the consequences for the global economy are very damaging of this because the dollar's movements are really a proxy for global liquidity. So the answer is to engage in dollar selling? Yes, that's right. And I think it's very important for America to realize that it is in its own interest to support such a move. Because, again, a popular narrative here is that because inflation is high, you need a strong dollar to offset that. And as I argue in that FT op-ed that you pointed out, that if you look at the research, it shows that only about 12 percent of America's GDP is in imports. And 95 percent of that America imports is invoiced in U.S. dollars. So the impact is minimal. And yet, if you have financial contagion in some other part of the world, it'll come back to bite America and the American economy as well. So I think it's in America's interest to lead a coordinated G20-type intervention. Other central banks and policymakers around the world, I know, will be quite willing to join it. It's just that America's been, been very reluctant to take such leadership, and yet its leadership will matter a lot. And if you circuit break the dollar's unusual strength here, I think that's a good release that you give to the global economy while continuing to increase interest rates to fight inflation. What would that leadership look like? Would it be a Plaza Accord type situation? Would it be something else? Well, a Plaza Accord is very ambitious, but I'm saying if you look at even after Plaza Accord, I remember in the mid-1990s or even like a decade ago, there have been series of coordinated interventions where people just, you know, where all the policymakers just come together to say that, listen, we need to cap the rise of the dollar, or in the past, in fact, they have worked to stem the dollar from falling too much in the mid-1990s. That, that's when the strong dollar policy came from Bob Rubin, because the dollar was crashing back then. So there is a lot of historical precedence for central banks and policymakers to act together without something as grandiose as a plaza accord, where they you know, really sort of have a series of interventions over many uh, months, if not years. So I think that this is the right opportune time to do something like that and break the doom loop, which currently seems to be gathering around the global economy. It's a fascinating conversation. I've spoken to a few traders who have suggested that maybe uh, other currencies are going to begin to catch up here just as central banks are catching up here. I mean, is there, is there an argument to be had there that time will take care of time or no, time is of the essence? Exactly. So I think that you're correct. I do feel that the dollar is close to a natural peak anyway because it's so grotesquely overvalued, right, that it's yeah. close to a natural peak. But the problem is that every day that this goes on, you're adding to the financial stress in the global economy unnecessarily. Because the tightening is going on, that's an inflation objective. And yet, by not increasing, uh, by not intervening and letting the dollar surge continue in this way, you're just adding to the stress of the global economy. You've got countries around the world which are reeling from this stress. So this is a great time for the U.S. to show leadership and engage here in a coordinated central bank intervention move. And the Treasury has to lead it, because I think a very important point here is that the currency policy is led by the U.S. Treasury, uh, and the Fed acts on that. So the Fed keeps on doing its job on, in, on uh, interest rates and inflation, and the Treasury takes the initiative here. And this has been done many times in the post Bretton Woods era of freely floating exchange rates. It's, it's just that it's not happened in the last few years, and I think it's time for this coordination to happen at this very moment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.